Good evening. Um, it is Monday, May 14th, 2018. We are going to get started. We have a quorum for the Administration and Public Works Committee. Um, first, we're going to approve our minutes. Alderman Rainey, can you? Um, Madam Chair, I move approval of minutes of uh, regular meeting of April 23. Second. All right, moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. We are now going to have Mayor Haggerty and Assistant City Manager um, Storley up for some public service awards. Okay, thank, th thank you. Uh, tonight we are going to um, recognize employees that have been with the city for over 25 years. There's a handful that have uh, come tonight to receive that, that recognition, and then there's a group that wasn't able to. Uh, I will tell you, in my one year in office, I am very, very impressed with the public servants that work full time for this city. They are responsive, they are passionate, they care about uh, this city tremendously, and so I'm really honored tonight to recognize the folks that we have on the list. So I'm gonna give it to uh, Assistant City Manager Storley to, uh, to take us through it. Excellent. As you know, we do this annually to coincide with Public Service Week, which was the first week of May. And it's my honor to present uh, these gifts tonight for these employees who have been here uh, 25 years or more. First, I'm going to recognize those who couldn't make it tonight, and I'm just going to read off their names and their years of service. So the first is Carmelo Penaroyo from Administrative Services, 30 years. Dean Mosca, Community Development, 30 years. Mark Buell, Police Patrol, 25 years. Jay Parrott, who recently retired, 25 years. Otis Velma, police, 25 years. Joe Bellino, also recently retired, 45 years. That was partially with a uniform patrol and then partially with a non-sworn. Non Matthew Grizzly, fire, 25 years. Michael Goldman, 25 years with the fire department. Jay Henderson, 35 years with the Public Works Agency. Gary Kramer, 30 years with the Public Works Agency. And Curtis Sales, 30 years with the Public Works Agency. Uh, now I would like James Pickett to come forward, 25 years with the Police Department. Sergeant Tracy Williams, 25 years with Evanston Police Department. Yeah, Deputy Chief Dwight Hole, 25 years with the Evanston Fire Department. Daniels, 30 years with the Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Department. Paul Diagostino, 30 years with the Public Works Agency. Yay. 
Kevin Ward, 30 years with the Public Works Agency. Alvin Beasley, 30 years with the Public Works Agency. <laughs> Looks like he couldn't be here tonight. And lastly, uh, P.A. Choksi, 35 years with the Public Works Agency. Congratulations. Thank you. And now I would like to ask the um, Evanston Library Board will present the next award. this unorganized. Karen, on behalf of the uh, public, the Board of Trustees for the Evanston Public Library, I want to present you with a certificate and thank you for your five years of service. And I'm looking forward to you hitting 30. <laughs> I'd like to invite Connie Hannigan, our Head of Neighborhood Services, here to um, be recognized for 30 years, 30 years of service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're in my area. Yeah. Thank you. And Marlene Meyer for 35 years of service. Thank you so much. One big, one big round of applause for all of these fine public servants. <laughs> Madam Chair, back, back to you. All right, thank you all for your years of service here. Um, we are going to move on to item A1, which is the payroll. Um, Alderman Suffernick, can you take us there, please? Uh, sure. Uh, item A1 is payroll from April 2nd, 2018 through April 15th, 2018, in the amount of 2 million seven hundred seventy one. $1,899.38. Uh, the payroll for April 16th, 2018 through April 29th, 2018 in the amount of $3,193,928.62. Second. So moved and second. Any questions? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. A2, Alderman um, Ruth Simmons, can you please take that one? Um, a2 bills list May 15, 2018, and the amount of four million one hundred fifty-six thousand six hundred seventy-three dollars and forty-five cents. Bank of America uh, February 2018 credit card activity items held at April 23rd City Council meeting in the amount of one thousand seven hundred sixteen dollars and ninety cents is for action. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. 
See no lights, no questions. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Um, item A 3.1 is a purchase of three vehicle cars for the Public Works Agency. Alderman Braithway asked that we hold that. He is en route to the meeting and he asked some questions. So I'm going to move on to item um, A 3.2 which is the revised purchase of one vehicle for Public Works Agency. The staff re recommends City Council approve the purchase of one vehicle, a 2019 Peterbilt Model 348 for operations in the Public Works Agency. The amount is $206,000, I'm sorry, $206,258,000 through the National Joint Powers Alliance contract. The funding comes from the Equipment Replacement Fund. Um, this item was actually recommended with an incorrect amount of um, on April 9th. So this is just a corrected amount. And I see there's some questions. Can someone second? Second. second. Okay. Alderman Suffern. Sure. Uh, I just um, wanted to better understand how we get the first number wrong and the second number. We're confident the second number is correct. <clears throat> Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Um, yeah, we're quite confident that the second number is correct. Uh, we, we had uh, recently taken this vehicle out of service due to uh, rusting of the firewalls and large gaps by the brakes. Um, we were kind of rushing to get it in and uh, just made an error, that's all. We, uh, we made a mistake with the, with the cost. We thought we had the right quote, but we actually had, uh, had only partial quote included in the last, uh, last submittal. Okay. Well, this, this, this number is good. This, this is a good number, yes. Yeah, we've, we've checked it and double checked it, so. All right, Autumn and Ruth Simmons. Thank you. Um, question, what sort of projects is this vehicle used for and what would we not be able to um, provide services for without it? Sure, so um, this vehicle is a, uh, a dump truck uh, with a radius dump spreader on it. It's used for various streets uh, operations and then also for um, snow removal uh, during the snow season. So, uh, you know, if we, if we didn't have this piece of equipment, we've, we'd be down in both uh, streets work and in snow removal. Thank you. Audemey Rainey. Yeah, I, <clears throat> we definitely need the vehicle. I have no problem with approving the purchase of it. What I have a problem with is how many eyes did that number pass in order to get to the city council? That, that, that shouldn't have happened. Yeah, I, I agree. We up here aren't skilled enough to know that we didn't just get a great deal on a truck, you know. Um, but we depend on you to give us the right numbers on these things. And I'm I'm just wondering how, how that could have happened. Um, so, um, I can speak to that. Alderman, um, Kimberly Richardson, um, uh, acting administrative services director and the person whose name is on top of that memo. So I hold responsibility for that. Um, what ended up happening is that the quote which I did review include the, the terminology of the chassis as well as the box being included and it had the number next to it. What ended up happening was that that number was not the final version of the full quote and so it was in the description of the quote but it didn't include the quote did not include that number and not having um known what the cost of the vehicle was previously i didn't have anything to reference and i went by the quote that was presented as a full amount um, when we went back in to review it we did notice that that was the the cause of the error and that it should have been separated out and not included under the description as one was this the, I, I have a few more questions. Was this the only vehicle considered? I, I should have gone back and looked. It at was the three previous. vehicles in that, in that. Um, no, no, what I'm, what I'm going to ask is, was this vehicle, was this bidder the only vehicle bidding on this bid, on this, uh, was this bidder? Peter Bill, uh, who was it? He, Peter Bill is the brand, right? Anyway, was, were there others trying to sell us this very same vehicle? <clears throat> no, this this was through a joint purchasing okay, contract. Okay, was a joint. Okay, so we didn't we didn't take this low bid over somebody else. Right, and okay. and maybe if we had you know shopped it around, we may we may have seen that you know right. we made the error. But All right, so mistakes happen, but yep. this, this is a pretty big one. Okay, All right, thank you. 
All right, seeing no further lights, um, we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion passes. Autumn and Fleming, I mean, gosh, Autumn and Rainey, can you do 3.3, .3, please? <laughs> I like that. Um, this is a contract renewal with Crave Concessions, LLC, for the 2018 Lakefront Concession Contract. Um, we're being asked to authorize the city manager to execute this one-year contract renewal um, with Crave for the Church and Clark Street Food and Drink Stands and the Lakefront Mobile Concessions, Lighthouse Clark, Greenwood, South Boulevard, and Lee Street Beaches uh, for the 2018 season. Um, Crave, uh, which many of us know, is now owned by an uh, individual named Brian Fogel, and um, he, they will pay the city $10,000 for the privilege of the 2018 permit. I move approval. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Seeing no lights, all those in favor? Please. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, Alderman Suffern in 3.4, please. Item 3.4 is a contract with First Student for Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Department 2018 Summer Bus Transportation uh, in an amount not to exceed $30,175. Second. All right, moved and second. It's seeing no lights for questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, Alderman Ruth Simmons, can you please... 3.5? Yes, A3.5. Staff recommends City Council accept and place the first quarter financial report for fiscal year 2018 on file. It's for action. Second. Second. Hello, how are you? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair and the members of the committee. It is this is Chief Financial Officer. Uh, we have a short presentation on the uh, first quarter financial report for the fiscal year 2018. Oh. Let's move on to the. So this is like a overview of the first quarter. Uh, general fund revenues are at 35 million or 30 percent of the budget, a little over our target of 25 percent because of the property tax which we get. Uh, general fund expenses at around 30 million at 26.4. And that number is a little higher because we include the pension levies in it. So the property tax money which we get, we expense that the money which we give it to the police and fire pension. And the first quarter ending unreserved fund balance for general fund at around $18 million with the cash balance of $12 million. This is the overall revenue um, by the category of the property tax. If you see at 54%, so we are on target. Other taxes at $11.5 million, so total is $34.9 million out of $114 million at 30% of our budget for fiscal 18. This is the general fund expense overview um, by each department, and again, as I said, it's 26.4%. If you see the police and fire, it's above the target of 25%, and that's because of the pension numbers in it. These are the chart showing the graphs, uh, the, the numbers for the fund balance as well as the cash balance comparing with the 2017. And if you see the fund balance, that's the top line, which is as of March, we have $19 million. 18 was around $18 million, so we are a little over there. Uh, cash balance is pretty much same with a little difference in it. Uh, enterprise fund, uh, parking system fund, 25% uh, of the revenues, expenses at 9% because of not much capital outlay in it. Uh, water fund revenues at 10% and expenses 6%. These numbers are lower because of the bond proceeds uh, of almost 27 million shown as a revenue and at the same time capital projects shown as an expenses and that hasn't happened yet. Uh, in the sewer fund, you would see it's more in line, the 25% of the revenues and the expenses at 16% because of not much capital outlay in it yet. And the solid waste fund finally at 25 and 18 percentage of the expense. This is the, covering all funds under some of the major categories and overall budgeted revenue at 30, 335 million for all the funds. And we are reporting at the end of the first quarter at around $76.7 .7 million at around 23 percent of the budget. 
all funds expenses. Uh, and again, $335 million budgeted expenses, $53.5 million in the quarter. First expenses percentage, 16%. Again, these numbers are lower because of not much capital outlay in it. Conclusion. Um, City of Evanston ended the first quarter in stable condition. Yes, uh, we have the property tax revenues, which is our largest source of revenue in line with what we expected and in the budget. Uh, we don't have many numbers from the state, only one month actual revenues for sales tax, uh, uh, home rule sales tax, telecommunication tax. Are. So we would have better numbers in the end of the second quarter. Uh, we'll continue to monitor the cost as well as the revenue trend. Again, we'll see whether the income tax reductions, you know, the state government last year said this would be only for one year. So we haven't heard otherwise, but we'll keep the uh, council mm -hmm. and the committee updated. And the last one is enterprise and capital funds. They will continue to spend down on the fund balance. They have built up a fund balance because of the bond issues and all that. And we will continue to spend on those ones. Any questions on those? Otterman Sufferden. Sure. Um, in the parking fund balance, is there a sufficient money there for the comprehensive parking analysis that was contemplated and approved as part of the 2018 budget? Oh, I can check it out. Okay. I have no information right now, but I can sure. check. I'd, I'd love to talk to you about okay. it. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, that's been properly moved and seconded. Okay, thanks. Can we have a motion? For, I mean, sorry, can we have a vote? All those in favor of accepting the place on file? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Um, item A3.6, um, Autumn and Braithway is en route, and he also asked if he can, we can hold that one. So if the speakers don't mind waiting, when Autumn and Braithway gets here, we'll discuss that one. Um, item 3.4 is Resolution 33-R-18, appointing Mr. Desai as the City of Evanston Delegate for Intergovernmental Personnel Benefit Cooperative. Staff has recommended that we adopt this resolution. This is for action. Move approval. Second? Second. All right, no questions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Alderman Rainey, can you do A5, please? Yes. Um, Right, this is um, resolution. Put the glass in the this is resolution 28R18. Uh, we're being asked to recommend to the council that they adopt resolution 28R18, authorizing a letter of understanding with the Evanston Foreign Fire Tax Board for a joint purchase of 93 sets of firefighter personnel uh, personal protective equipment. The vendor will be Air One Equipment Inc. Um, the total cost spread over five year period will be two hundred and twenty one thousand eight hundred and five dollars. Funding will be from the general fund uh, and an amount not to exceed the city's share of seventeen thousand eight hundred and ninety two dollars per year for a total of eighty nine thousand four hundred thirty eight dollars. Um, Additional funding of $132,367, or 60% of the cost, is from the Firefighter Foreign uh, Tax Board. This is for action. I move approval. Second. All right, seeing no lights, moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Alderman Suffren, can you take A6, please? Sure. Uh -huh. Item A6 is uh, Resolution 31R18, requesting volume cap allocation for private activity bonds from the State of Illinois Governor's Office. Uh, the staff recommends City Council approve uh, authorizing bonds uh, from the State of Illinois Governor's Office in the amount of $7,821,030 for 2018. Uh, this is for action. Second. Second. All right, moved and seconded. No questions. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Rusa Simmons, can you do A7? Oh, actually, before we do A7, we have some speakers. So I'm going to call you up. We are going to allow two minutes for speaking tonight on these topics. First, I have Jonathan Shepard. Madam Chair, could we just say what this is oh. so people at home... That's what I was just asking. <laughs> My, my handy dandy partner here. Sorry about that. If you could just hold on, Jonathan. Sure. This is um, 
Item A7 is Resolution 27-R-18 to terminate the lease for city-owned real estate property located at 2222 Oakton Street with Smiley Brothers. The staff is recommended we adopt this resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a mutual termination of the lease agreement for the city-owned property at 2222 Oakton Street with Smiley Brothers Draft and Package LLC. Staff is also looking for directions for next step. This is for action. All right, there you are. Second. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Jonathan Shepard. I'm actually a business director for a locally owned and operated business called First Ascent Climbing and Fitness, and I'm here with my business partner, Joe Zentmeyer, who's the CFO for First Ascent Climbing and Fitness, and we just came to express our sincere interest in 2222 Oakton Street. Um, we are a, a locally owned business in Chicago with four locations around the city. And we operate rock climbing gyms. We have rock climbing and fitness and yoga, and we do uh, uh, general events. And uh, we've been around. We've been a business for three years in Chicago, and we have uh, uh, thousands of members around the city of Chicago. And at, at our various locations, have generally between two and 500 people a day that come to rock climb and do fitness and yoga. And we've had a number of our members actually express interest in Evanston or a number of our members that are from this neighborhood and uh, the city and other neighborhoods surrounding saying that they think this would be a fantastic fit. And we've been looking at this location, this building for a number of years actually because of its ceiling heights and because of the size of the building feel that it would be a fantastic reuse of that space and also just be a really great fit for the city of Evanston. Um, I'll say a little bit about that because I'm guessing a lot of you are not familiar with rock climbing. Um, in two minutes, I can't say too much. I would encourage you, if you're interested, to look on our website. It's First Ascent Climbing and Fitness. But just to give you a quick synopsis, climbing has been gaining in popularity for over a decade. It's a great uh, uh, activity that brings people together in community, and it's for both young and old. It's not like a lot of people hear rock climbing and think this is something that's like skateboarding. It's just for teenagers, or it's like trampolines and parks. It's just for kids. No, rock climbing is something where we have members, young and old. We have families that climb together on a regular basis. And I think one thing really unique that we would bring to this location and to the city is that we um, – we see hundreds of people, like I said, coming to our locations every day, and then those people tend to climb together, socialize together, take yoga classes together, and then a lot of them often go out and uh, visit local businesses, go to local restaurants, and not only that, as a company, as a locally owned company, we love supporting other local businesses. Um, we often do events, climbing competitions, we do events for uh, businesses, team building events, and we often bring in food from other local uh, restaurants and breweries and uh, feel like we would be a great use of this space and really uh, uh, great addition to the Evanston City. So we appreciate right. your time. Well, thank you so much for coming and making your case known to us. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I actually skipped our first speaker, which was Mr. Janan Rinsky. Thank you. Um, Several times I asked at council over the last several months what was happening with this, and it was clear this was falling apart. Um, it was never really answered till now, of course. Um, I think what bothers me here again, it's so much how we run projects and can't run projects here. Um, and six months into this, the city should have known what was going on and figured out what to do and didn't do it. And it should have been terminated then. We wasted a lot. But we continue to waste. One thing I think that's very interesting about this, as I drive by there in the last several months, all the city equipment has found its way back there. When this started, the city cleared that place out, and there was talk it was going to rent storage space. So what happened to that storage space? Did the city rent things? What did it do? And now all this equipment's found its way back there. This building cost the city $4 million to build. It's, someone said it's assessed at 800000 So you're going to take an asset and give it to cheaply to somebody, I'm sure, in some silly deal. That, and we, have, we, don't, we probably could use it for storage space even. And, and you know, basically, we continue to, to lose too much money here. I mean, we're, we're, it appears we're okay on the budget at the moment, but I think what, what's killing this budget is all these wasteful ex, ex capital expenditures and giving away money to people, and it's really costing a lot. And I don't think I think this should not be done tonight to move ahead for any kind of request for proposal. But the city better you better ask them what they're doing with storage over there and what's happened and know what's going on. 
because they, they clearly don't know what's going on here. They couldn't even figure out the price of a truck here. Not that I believe you're at fault for that. I mean, you're, you're, you're an admin here, I guess, so, but I don't know what your role is. But um, frankly, the city's a mess. And, you know, 18 months for this, uh, very, very, very disturbing. And I'll just add a little thing about Fountain Square. I walked down there and looked at that. That's not going to be done the end of this month. What I saw there, you'll be getting another change order. I think, and that's, you should ask the question when it comes back to the other change order, what's going on there? Because clearly staff doesn't know how to run the jobs. Thanks. Thank you very much. Next we have Mr. Andy Stein. Thank you, members of the committee, for your time this evening. Uh, my name is Andy Stein with Clark Street Real Estate. Um, in 2015, we responded to the initial RFP uh, with our tenant, First Ascent Climbing, uh, in a, in a uh, partnership with them. Um, while we were very excited in 2015 to make our presentation and thought we um, presented a very convincing argument to the, to the city of Evanston to select us, unfortunately, it went in a different direction. Um, since that time, we have um, looked in the city of Evanston, continued to talk with city staff as well as look in the general trade area, as we refer to in the, the real estate business, for other locations. It became uh, uh, apparent to us and recently became aware that the Smiley Brothers uh, was not moving forward at 222 Oakton. And so I just wanted to express our sincere concerns that we've been tracking this for some time, for a number of years, and we would still have a, we still, along with our uh, tenant first ascent, have a very sincere interest to try to move forward and work a deal that would be um, bring a world-class climbing facility and first to market to Evanston and something really that would be a feather in everyone's cap. So thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. And our last speaker is Mr. Andrew it's Becker. No, Andrew. All right, so it's been moved and seconded. We're going to go ahead and start the discussion for item A7. No comments? Alderman Rainey? Um, I'd like to move to hold this in committee so that we can have um, give some more thought to this. I'm not sure. May, I, maybe, maybe our staff would like to speak to this. Um, I asked our legal staff at one time when this appeared to be going south about holding Smiley Brothers to this lease. And, you know, I, I'm not always the lightest, brightest bulb in the socket, but I know a lot about leases, and I, I, I know I was told that we really can't hold them to this lease. And I believe we can hold them to something having to do with this lease. I love Smiley Brothers. I believed with my heart that they were going to be able to pull this off and not fail, but they didn't. And um, I, I, I'm surprised that they did not. But I don't think that for them to just hold us hostage more or less I didn't feel like I was being held hostage. I felt like something was going to happen and they were working on the best deal possible for themselves. And that was what I was hoping for. But they didn't. And, and we have held this um, off the market uh, for all that time. And so I, I would like our legal department to come back to us with a full-blown explanation of what we can do going forward legally to either have them uh, in some way um, provide us with some remuneration for this time that it's been off the market or an explanation of why we can't hold them to that. All right, Alderman Suffern. Sure. Um, I was hoping maybe, Johanna, if, if you uh, could speak to what next steps are. I agree with Alderman Rainey. I, the number is not zero. Uh, Some of the brothers seem to think it is. That is certainly not the number. Uh, but if we could talk about next steps going forward or what type of timeline we'd be looking at and, and what the best way to move forward is. Sure. Good evening, Johanna Leonard, Community Development Director. Uh, we would uh, expect if we were to move forward from with a, once we dis determine what to do with Smiley, uh, moving forward to repurpose the property if we did it in the manner of an RFQP, a request for qualifications, and then 
uh, vet those to, to seek a proposal from that point, uh, that could be somewhere between um, 12 to 18 months, a little bit longer, depending on um, if we got responses and if they were uh, complete. So that, that in terms of timeline, that, that's what I would expect. Okay. And then in terms of um, figuring out what to do about termination of this lease, if we do nothing, would we expect a payment from Smiley Brothers on July 1st? Uh, I will defer to the, the law department on this one, but that would be my expectation. Okay. Good evening, Alex Mackey, Assistant City Attorney. Uh, that's correct. Uh, the City Council, there is no opt-out early uh, clause to the lease. There was initially at the very beginning, but that's since ended. So now the City Council has to vote to let them out of the lease. Uh, otherwise, it would move forward. All right, thank you both. All right, so Alderman Rainey. Um, I, I guess it would be helpful to refresh our memories um, about what happened in the beginning. Um, I don't remember a rock climbing proposal that came to us at the time of the deadline. We did. We that, did have. Th that, it was one of the three. Proposals. And it was um, responsible and responsive. Yes, it was. Us. Okay, with with numbers in it and everything. Okay. The, if you recall, the resolution to direct staff to go forward and, and, and seek this indicated a dining entertainment right, option, right. and that did not happen. Well, yeah. the climbing is entertainment, but yeah. it was it wasn't didn't fit the dining niche that Smiley Brothers had. I just wasn't. Thinking it was rock climbing. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, I, I just think we should be reassured. I, you know, I would hate to see us spend a lot of money in court on this, mm -hmm. but I, I just don't think it should be signing off on this lease after all this time. So, so Alderman Rainey would like I, to I make the request to hold it. In committee until Second. we get that information. And um, as you're working on the staff, and one question I want to make sure we add to the next round when it comes back is, is there a way that we can, I would be interested in having Smiley Brothers do some kind of buyout or payback from the time? Well, that, that's what right. I'm looking for. But then also I would like to know how that would, if that would interfere with us moving forward. Yeah, with I, another buyer. And that's, that's another thing. I, I don't want this to hold us up in any way. Yeah, I don't want to but wait it, the 18 it months. Just, it just feels wrong. And I agree with people who say Smiley Brothers is a wonderful community asset. They, you know, they have contributed so much uh, to not-for-profits, et cetera, and also to our tax base. But right is right and wrong is wrong, and they've not done us right. Yes, City Manager. Madam Chair, members of the committee, good evening. Uh, might I suggest that perhaps the issue be split, that we could come back to you at your next meeting to talk about next steps for the facility, but if you could give us some additional time to uh, talk with the Smiley Brothers uh, regarding um, uh, efforts to end the, the lease based on the discussions this evening. So uh, to keep, because ultimately these will end up being now on two separate tracks. And so to, to be responsive, to make sure that we're moving forward with next steps, we could come back at your next meeting, but wait until uh, a month from now to come back with an update on uh, uh, the solution for ending the lease with Smiley. So, okay, so you would like to come back next month with a uh, solution for moving forward uh, uh, or propose ideas for moving forward? Well, to, to have the discussion, I think that so the comeback, I believe it's the Tuesday, the 29th of May is the next uh, regular meeting, that will be the next uh, AMPW meeting. I'm going to come back at that point to talk further about next steps, either going through an RFP process or whatever the council may, may think, but then come back to you on June the 11th with an update on the the, uh, the closure of the, the current agreement. Alder Marini, your lights on. Well, I, I mean, splitting, there are two different things here going on. So, I mean, I just wanted to hold it here so that we could get that information before going forward. But, but I, I don't see that splitting the issue is any big deal because it's two different issues. Sure. So, so if, if it's right. no big deal, we would ask that at your next meeting that the item be held, but at your next meeting we bring back the portion dealing with next steps and then uh, the first meeting in June come back with after we've talked with the Smiley Brothers some more. But, I mean, 
I think the committee could talk about next steps if the lease is terminated. Uh, and the lease is terminated, I think, wouldn't we all right. go so forward I, with something? I would want to talk about next steps, but I don't want to get too far down the next steps road if there's not a way for us to move away from Smiley Brothers. So can we do this? Can we do it in reverse? Can we do Smiley Brothers first and then next steps? We can leave the whole issue on for two weeks and we'll make the best effort that yeah, we can. Yeah, I think that would be good. I just don't want to go too far in the next steps conversation if we're not sure where we are with Smiley Brothers. Well, I think all of Fleming members of the committee, um, it is within this council's sole right to terminate the lease or not terminate the yeah, lease. So uh, I think my challenge from talking with many of you is to work with the nice folks at Smiley uh, and try to come up with a solution uh, that meets your needs. And I'm hearing that uh, the council would like to see some compensation uh, from uh, Smiley Brothers. I think um, I had to step out. Uh, our former CFO was calling regarding another item on the agenda this evening. Um, and so I think the issue of the taxes was raised. Um, there is also an issue of outstanding taxes. Um, Ms. Leonard, could you come up and, and, and share that? So that's in addition to the lease terms, uh, there was also taxes that apparently have not been paid. Uh, so the lease contemplated and stated that if in the end of the inspection period, which was, which was last year, um, they would move forward with pay paying the taxes for 2017 um, and 2018 and so forth. So that was a requirement um, that they start to pay, and, they, and they, didn't, they didn't put the taxes in their name and move forward with that. They, do, they have put the utilities in their name, and they have been paying the utilities at the, at the property, but they haven't moved forward with the taxes. All right, Alderman Suffernan. Sure. I just want to make sure um, I understand where we are right now is we have an enforceable lease at $13,645.83 a month. And starting in July, we can expect that payment from Smiley Brothers every month for the next eight and a half years unless we take any action to alter that. Is that correct? Okay. Plus, tax. Plus the taxes. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Rainey. Um, I'm wondering, given given that this has reached this point, would there be any point in going to Smiley Brothers and seeing if there is any alternative road going forward for them at this location? We've had those uh, discussions prior to this evening over the last uh, mm -hmm. month or so, and they indicated not. I think, uh, you know, this is, we need to come back to them with the results of the discussion this evening. Okay. And perhaps but I would that like will to, change. I would like you to include that, given the fact that we are in a position, I don't think they felt that we were in a position to hold them to their lease. Given the fact that we are, they may find um, a way to reconsider their decision. They very well may. On by Ruth Simmons. Thank you. Um, can we move forward with um, exploring what our options are at a minimum, collecting the taxes that were agreed on and also pursuing um, new businesses that are interested? I don't have much interest in trying to negotiate with a business that has decided that they don't want to move forward. So I think that they've probably worked through that pretty thoroughly, um, so to kind of enforce them to be in business here, I, I don't support that. But I do want to know more about the businesses that have some interest in um, joining our community. Well, I know several that do. And, and, and Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, as, as mentioned in the staff report, uh, a likely next step on that would be to do another request for proposal process. And I think what I'm hearing from members of the committee is that we should be as expeditious with that as possible. This is a known commodity. Uh, you've already have representatives of, of groups here this evening. Uh, I don't see why that has to be an elongated process. Uh, we've already done an RFP. We have the documents. Um, so why don't we work on that part as well over the next two weeks and come back with a proposed time frame um, for, for doing an expedited RFP process. So we'll include that in the staff report coming back in two weeks. Can I? Go ahead. Uh, more about the, the, um, the interest in having it food and recreation. Like where was that determined? When was that determined? And is that something that can be up for discussion if there is a better use that doesn't include food? Would Certainly. that all be um, spelled out in the RFQ or P? 
Certainly. Okay. Um, I, I think where that came from is previous council discussions on this matter. I think that uh, the, the council was looking for as active a use as possible, and I think that food and activity often travel together. They certainly aren't exclusive. I think uh, from what I heard of the, the, the uh, representatives from the rock climbing, that they often bring in food. But I think uh, uh, from a staff's perspective, we just want this to be an active facility. And so uh, we can highlight the, the sections that were previously in there if the council wishes to make changes to, to make it more broadly entertainment uh, and not so much connected to the food. As we you know, we've got uh, microbreweries in town that bring in food trucks to bring in other food. So I, I think this idea that you have to have a full kitchen to offer food um, is one that's changing not only in our community but in other communities. And so it may make perfect sense to you know, be a little bit different in the approach. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, so it sounds like we are in agreement to have the city manager work on our termination of the lease options as well as an RFP or RFQ coming back for editing. Is that correct? All right, so we, do we need to vote on that? All right, so that was moved and second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, that passes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, Alderman Braithway has joined us for the record. We are... A8 is resolution 19-R-18, the extension of a license to Comcast allowing maintenance of a building and fence in the right-of-way of Mulford and Park land in James Park. Staff recommends City Council adopt this resolution authorizing City Manager to execute a four-year extension until May 31st, 2022 of the license for License to Comcast to, for facilities in James Park. The total revenue for the license agreement will be $95,616. This is for action. Second. Seeing no lights for discussion, that's moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Alderman Braith, what can you do, 8 9? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to move ordinance number 62-0-18, amending the hours of alcohol service. Uh, it sounds like Local Liquor Commission recommends the City Council's uh, adoption of the ordinance 62-0-18, amending the City Code sub, uh, Section 3-4-9 to allow the extended hours of alcohol service. The ordinance permits the Local Liquor uh, Commissioner's discretion to extend hours of lawful service per written order. Second. Alderman Marini. Well, I, have, um, I don't have any problem with extending hours of operation. And you all know I've never met a liquor license I didn't like. However, however, I don't believe the mayor has the authority. I don't believe the liquor commissioner has the authority to do this. And I don't want that to share that authority with the liquor commissioner. We make all the rules regarding liquor licenses. The liquor commissioner, he or she, um, determines who's eligible to get licenses. And then they send us that information and uh, let us know what license they think that person should apply for. But I, I don't approve of the mayor determining hours um, of, of uh, licensees. Alderman Braithway. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, I, uh, and thank you, Alderman. I was looking actually for the same clarification. Um, I Again, I don't have any issue with extending the hours, but no. are, is this the mayor, and I don't know if he's here in the, the building, asking for, for this, I mean, for this privilege? Is there staff that can speak to the mayor, uh, the liquor commissioner's role in this? Madam Chair, members of the, co of the committee, uh, I think the uh, a staff report on page 309 um, uh, makes some citations of other liquor commissioners in other communities doing this. Um, the, the end ordinance 62018 uh, would be in, in, in concert with that. Uh, Ms. Mackey uh, is here, I think, can speak to it further. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Alex Mackey, Assistant City Attorney. Um, city manager is correct. Uh, while we do not have that provision currently, um, we did look at other similar municipalities and they've given their liquor board commissioner um, that 
uh, provision to allow for this and um, also to allow for the uh, fee to extend the hours. So, Mr. Madam Chair, members of the committee, I think what we're saying is we believe this ordinance to be lawful but requires your approval. Okay, I have a question. Do we need to, before we go forward with just, just this ask, do we need to update, I guess, the rules for our liquor commissioner that they have this authority? Since it, or are you saying it, I know you said it, other cities have it, but it sounds like we don't directly have it here at the city of Evanston. So, so this ordinance would be providing that. So uh, again, I, my, my take on this, Ms. Mackey, please stop me if I'm wrong, is this is an authority that can be granted to a liquor commissioner with the consent of the governing body. That's so, correct. Maybe so if, if, the, if the governing body concurs, then the liquor commissioner has the authority. If the, the governing body does not concur, then it does not or can grant the liquor commissioner the authority in a different manner. Alderman Rainey. Well, I did a lot of research also on this, and I found that most localities' liquor commission commissioner does not have this authority. And it's probably because the municipality uh, city council or board of trustees or whatever is in that municipality did not afford it to the mayor or to the um, liquor commissioner. And I, I just think, you know, there gets to be a point where we need to keep some control over liquor in our town. And I... I don't believe I ever voted against a liquor license. So you might be able to find one someplace. But this is, this is a job for us. These places are in our wards and in our neighborhoods. And I really want to have some say over when the times are increased or decreased or for whatever reason. And I would like you all to participate in making those decisions, not a single um, individual, the liquor commissioner. And I think we know more about the location of the places that are asking for additional time. Now, if you want to give, we want to make a, a change in the ordinance that says certain establishments that show certain soccer games are on certain, during certain seasons, the you know, you can sell alcohol at four o'clock in the morning, for example, for the royal wedding is coming up, and that's Coverage is going to start at 3 a.m. You might want to serve champagne at 3 a.m. So, but that shouldn't be up to the liquor commissioner. That should be up to us. All right. So I mean, this it's is, a real simple argument. This has been I've, moved and seconded. I want to remember Braithway made a um, suggestion that this would go to the rules committee, or we can just take a vote on it as is. Does anyone want to, do you want to make your motion? I mean, I just reference it to rules, and then that way we could benefit from a full council discussion versus taking time to weed through this tonight would be my suggestion. Does anyone support that? We could have a full council discussion. Pardon me? We could it's have important. a full council discussion when it comes up for action. Uh, well, yeah. That's fine, too. But we could also go to the full school. Just Maybe we should just have a vote and... You okay with that? All right, so city manager. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt the, the committee's deliberations. Alderman Wilson was thinking exactly what I was, and that is regardless of the, the action on this matter, we have a local business that's asking for relief. Um, if we were able to um, craft something for uh, introduction at the city council this evening that would allow the city council to do this so that that could be introduced and then the yes. Alderman Braithwaite's um, discussion could uh, could be also referred to the rules committee. I think the, I don't sense there's any objection to this specific request that's brought this here nope. to you nope. and that is the Celtic not have the ability to do right. that. So, so. It's, it's been moved and seconded. Let's vote. It's for introduction. We can speak about it as council. All right. And, and Alderman Fleming, members of the committee, is it the desire of the committee to allow uh, the Celtic not to move forward with this? Because if it is, we would like the ability to perhaps have an alternate uh, amendment to this that would allow then the city council to approve it um, so that they would have the ability, I believe it's uh, June 14th that they're looking to start. So this would still take introduction unless you waive a second reading, uh, then they would have to be able to come back on June the 11th um, for action to amend the the their license based on this new ordinance. So we can make all that happen if the committee concurs. 
All right. I don't think I heard any objections. No. Alderman no. Rainey. No objection. Could we could we just um, amend out, uh, delete the part about the mayor here, and just move on? If you would give us the few moments between the committee meeting and the full council meeting so that I can confer with the assistant city attorney and perhaps, uh, Madam Chair, this could just be pulled uh, from the consent calendar. We can discuss it at that point and we'll have an alternate path for the council to accomplish what you're looking to accomplish. Okay. So I'm going to approve that. So we will pull this A9 from consent agenda and it has been moved and seconded. So we are moving on. Do we need to vote on that, Janella? Thank you. Yes. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. That moves. All right, we're going back to item A3.1 that we held for Alderman Braithwaite. Alderman Randy, can you please read that one? A3.1? Yes, 3.1. We didn't. Okay, okay. Let me get up there. Let's see. A3.1. Okay, A3.1. A3.1. Okay, oh, here we go. Um, uh, Madam Chair, sorry for the delay. Um, our staff is recommending that uh, we authorize the manager to purchase three vehicles for operations in the Public Works Agency, Water Production Bureau, and Public Service Bureau. Uh, the following uh, vehicles will be purchased. A Ford F-350 XP from Curry Motors um, in the amount of $36,995. A crane carrier model LET-2 Dash 44 from National Fleet Auto Group in the amount of $267,825 and a Kenworth, 14, uh, Kenworth uh, T440 cab and chassis from Standard Equipment Company in the amount of $396,116.58. I move approval. Second. I right, moved and seconded. Alderman Braithwaite. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I apologize. I know that there's an email uh, that I'd sent, and I haven't had a chance to go through it, but I don't know whoever we have here from Fleet Services. <clears throat> Good evening. Thank you. So I'll, Alderman myself and I won't speak for you, but I'll reference similar questions that you've raised, and also Alderman Rainey and other members of the committee going into a very... Uh, competitive budget season where we're looking to uh, save money in our budget. You know, as I read through uh, the vehicle uh, requests, from time to time things come up that are confusing to me. And so uh, this last, last night over the weekend, this is a perfect example. So I see a 2013 vehicle that has 17,000 miles, and I'm sure you're going to give me a really good explanation, but one of the concerns that I have, number one, is just the low mileage of the vehicle. And I'm asking myself, like, and there'll be an ask for a report at the end of my, my comments, but again, I know, my understanding is that we have a maintenance department that's supposed to make sure that the, you know, the oil is changed regularly, the sure. tires, et cetera, et cetera. In a town that's you know, four by four miles by seven miles. I'm really trying to understand: is this an urgent request? Because part of my frustrations is, as I read through each request, and it doesn't matter what the dollar amount is, urgent request. It's almost like someone's cutting and pasting the same language. And I'm just, I think it's safe to say, with this committee and based on our budget needs, that it's not going to fly anymore. Understandable. I'll do my best to explain it to you. Okay. Um, so this this vehicle in question, uh, which is vehicle 956, it's a, a Jetter vacuum truck. Um, like you said, it's a 2012 with 17,000 miles on it. Um, the by the nature of this piece of equipment, it's driven to different locations to do uh, sewer cleanup. Okay. <clears throat> but it's actually running throughout the day, even though it's not traveling miles. Um, it's got a certain number of runtime on it. Uh, the industry, industry standard shows that um, for every hour of idling time, that equals about 25 to 35 mi uh, 30 miles. Um, so basically, if we were to add up, you know, the, the the amount of idling time over the years that this vehicle has put in, it actually brings us closer to 200,000 miles. Um, 
once you add that on for the five years. Um, our fleet staff does provide regular uh, preventative maintenance on this vehicle, uh, but there's also some specialty components um, for the vacuum and the jetting that they do, and those are subject to a lot of wear and tear, um, and, and that there's you know quite a bit of uh, cost that goes into repairing those. Um, I do want to point out that uh, we by by trading by purchasing this vehicle now, part of the price is the trade in uh, the old vehicle, which would give us savings of seventy two thousand uh, dollars at this point. Okay. I'll ask for the port appropriate. Sure. Hold on a Questions. Uh, I just want to ask, how many of these do we have? Is it just one? Uh, I believe that. I'll, I'll let Dave answer that. I believe we have just one right now. Good evening, Dave Stomach, Public Works Agency. Uh, the city actually has two sewer cleaning machines. Uh, they're in operation every day. In that, uh, the city attempts to clean one third of the city, its drainage structures in one third of the city every year, and clean the sewer pipe, uh, the combined sewer pipe, 36 inches and smaller throughout the city, once every four years. So th these two machines are out on the street every day. Unfortunately, you clean about 30 catch basins a day, and that means that you're only going about two blocks. So it drives from the water plant out to the job site, and then it's on two blocks or three blocks, just running constantly cleaning uh, drainage structures. And the other machine is out uh, cleaning sewer pipe, and we get about 1,000 feet a day. So again, you're, you're not doing a whole lot of driving. You're mostly sitting there running this equipment. The chassis and the tires and the maintenance that the city performs is basically on, on the part that drives. The, the compressor, the blowers, the fans, uh, they all run continuously, and our city staff cannot repair the bearings on the fan that creates the vacuum to pull the material up out of the drainage structure or out of the sewer. So those pieces of equipment fail, and we have experience that once a truck is more than five years old, these, that's when, year six is when this equipment starts failing. And we've gone through that, and then year six, the truck is out for, to the, not in our shop, but to the shop that we have to send it to for three to four months at a time while it's being repaired, meaning that catch basins aren't being cleaned or sewer pipes aren't being cleaned. So we, we took all this maintenance in-house with our own staff rather than contracting it out. And at one point it was cheaper to contract this out, but once the labor, the, the union that does this type of labor raised their rates, it was more economical for the city to do this work than to contract it out. And we did a whole analysis about buying the second truck, then building the garage necessary to, to house it. And we've been doing that for probably 20 years now. And it's critical that we clean the catch basins once every three years because a lot of them still have the, drain, uh, the restrictors in them, all the drainage structures connected to combined sewer. And if the catch basins get filled up with too much debris, then nothing drains into the sewer. It all stands up on the street. So it's a type of work that needs to get completed. It's our opinion that this is the most economical way of doing it by doing it in-house but you need the trucks to be able to do it. And that's why we schedule to replace these trucks once every five years, and we have two trucks, and we separate them by two to three years, so it's not a major capital each year. The fund is from the sewer fund. The, the, the funding for the equipment is from the sewer fund, uh, so it's not coming from the capital or the general fund. So we request that you seriously consider this uh, and approve this purchase. Okay. Um, just, you're in a tough spot because, like, we demand that – you get this work done, and then the equipment you need to do it is just expensive. And here we find ourselves in a tough budget, and this is the time to do it. Is there a way to get another year out of this truck? I know you, I know you said this is the point where they start to fail, but... Well, right now the truck isn't even here because it's already failed. The, the suction tubes that are used to bring the debris up is, is basically uh, full of holes. The elbow where it turns, it, it has to make it like a 90-degree bend. It's more like a 75-degree bend. That elbow is completely shot. They put a liner inside of it. So yes, can we run it another year? But we will have a big ex we'll have a big expense now. But then it isn't the fan that broke. And the bearings. Once the bearings go bad in that fan, uh, I believe what 
to get that cost is somewhere around thirty thousand dollars. If you look at the cost that has been spent in this vehicle already, it's not on the chassis and things like that. There's all of our expense so far has been on this other maintenance that sits on top of the truck, other equipment that sits on the truck. So yeah, if we get another year, but then I forget when the next one's purchased. So okay. then you, you were just backing up, you know, more and more. Would it be possible to get just for comparison the number it it would cost to get this thing set for one more year versus purchasing a new one. I mean, we'd have to purchase a new one in the next year or two anyway, Correct, right? and then we have another truck that then would have to be replaced okay. in a year or two as well. Uh, sure, we can we do... We get it just to just look at the numbers side by side and, and make a more okay. informed decision. Is that... Sure. Okay. Thank you. So, Dave, I'm sorry. So, my, my question is, just so we're not piecemealing this every single time a purchase uh, comes up, um, I know that we just received some national award that uh, complemented our, our fleet services. And so in my mind, I'm asking the silly question, you know, how do we get there? Do we get there based on, you know, new vehicles, low cost? You know, I have a bunch of questions. So rather than ask you to describe it, I'm going to go back and read through uh, the criteria. And then I'll, you know, I may have some other questions, but basically, I guess what I'm looking for is just a real brief summary to understand what we spent in 2016 and 2017, and then to have a good understanding of what we're going to spend this year. I mean, I, th I think we all, anybody who drives a vehicle, I ask myself the question, I got a 2005 Volvo. At some point, I'm going to have to replace that vehicle, but there is a significant cost to that. And so every vehicle that comes our way, I'm going to ask, well, you know, deferred maintenance, you know, what where where does it make sense to purchase so i think it i want to say within the last year i asked a question about maintenance contracts on vehicles and i recently received an article that i'll share with the city manager and whoever with you as well where a municipality was able to save millions of dollars by uh, renting vehicles and i'm sure they're not referring to these big large rigs but just your average cars that are driven as a way of cost saving. So is it possible to get that report 2016, 2017, and to look at where we're going to spend this year, just so I can have a understanding of how much we actually spend for cars every year? It's for the entire fleet, not just it's specifically for the on this yep. 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 vehicle. Yep. Okay, sure. Thank you. City Manager, did you have something? Um, just an observation uh, as we're, and I, and I think Alderman Braithwaite's comments are very, you know, appropriate given where we are with the budget. I mean, it's a policy decision for the council. Um, you know, I arrived here nine years ago. There were vehicles that you could see the street from the drivers, from the passengers side, is that the city kind of went too far the other direction of saying, okay, let's wait one more year, let's wait one more year, um, and then maintenance costs rise. So we've, we have pared the fleet down over time. We have tried to take out as many sedans as we can. We've tried to go green with electric vehicles and whatnot, which have generally uh, sometimes better uh, maintenance schedules and, and different types like that. So we're happy to look at that. I think the overall question um, is, is do we pay now, do we pay later? Uh, and I think we have been recognized as one of the 100 top fleet maintenance operations in, among uh, state and local governments in the United States uh, because we've done a very good job, I think, trying to manage those costs. So um, obviously awards are one thing, the budget's another thing, and so we're not we're not doing this for awards. We're doing this to show the residents of Evanston that we are good stewards of their dollars. So um, we're happy to come back with that information. I think with all that said, uh, this factor is very important. Um, they're out tonight, I'm sure, clearing uh, stormwater. The impacts to our residents not having this type of equipment is different than not having a sedan uh, that our building inspectors are going around in. So um, I guess my hope is that we can come back with the information that Alderman Braithwaite has requested, um, certainly look at these three tonight coming from uh, maintenance funds, uh, move forward with those, but to continue to have this dialogue uh, moving forward. Thank you, Alderman Rainey. Um, Alderman Braithwaite, you're not asking to hold this. We're going to move forward with this. Um, I'm, I want to argue. No. I want to argue. No, you're not. No, I just wanted to have the discussion. And get that information in Correct. addition to buying the, making this correct. purchase. Okay. All right. Well, this one of the things that is probably the most gruesome and feared 
um, issue that homeowners have, as you all know, right. is sewer backups. Yep. And we've made a lot of progress not having that. And, Tremendous I amount. Mean, these machines are, I mean, you've seen them out on the street. They're yeah. so humongous. Yeah, the Chicago Tribune called this morning to ask how many basements were flooded last night because they, right. they were getting all of right. the other communities around us, and the answer in Evanston was zero. Right. To our knowledge. It's, so that's moved and seconded. So may we uh, no more discussion? All right. All those in favor of accepting? Aye. Three point one. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. All right. One opposed. Motion carries. All right. We're going to three point six. Um, Ottoman Suffren, can you please read that one? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We have two speakers. I'm so sorry. Oh, I've, okay. I'm sorry again. Alderman Suffren, can you read A3.6? Sure. Uh, item uh, A3.6 is the disposition of waste transfer tipping fees, uh, station project funding. Uh, this is for action. Second. All right. Now we have two speakers. So um, Janan Ritsky, and then we have Janet Alexander Davis. Um, I think my question as I read this was, were these funds allowed to be transferred to the general fund and not kept really for the impact fees on the neighborhood and the residents? Um, this is to a concern of me. If this council told Mr. Bobkowitz that he was to maintain those funds for the residents and that he did this, then I think that's a very serious matter with his performance. So that needs to be addressed and asked. Because as I read the memo, it appears the funds were transferred. Just like the night you, someone asked about the Harley Clark funds, the $250,000, they were transferred. If he's moving funds around without your approval and the public thinks the funds are there for something, that's a problem. And what's going on with the budget doesn't leave anyone in the community with any confidence in our budget. And um, really, it's very, very, very concerning um, what's going on here. And um, the council better get to the bottom of this. Because those residents, you know, don't, you know, borrowing this on 30-year bonds for basically engineering work is ridiculous. I mean, you're, if you're worried about money and you're worried about street suckers and sucking trucks. Actually, I thought Mr. Stonebeck for once gave a very good explanation. I asked for four years on the water department. I can't get that. But at least he did a good job on what he just did about the water, the sewer trucks, I had to say. So um, you, you need to ask some very tough questions about this budget and what's going on. And I think it's very important to know where those funds went, or if those funds were allowed to be used that way or not, and what happened. And you need an explanation of that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Alexander? Davis. Ms. Alexander Davis. My husband's here. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> good evening, Madam Chair, uh, committee members, and staff. Um, my name is Janet Alexander Davis, Evanston citizen, member of the Environmental Justice Evanston Working Committee under the umbrella of uh, Citizens Greener Evanston, and also a member of the task uh, task force, which Alderman Ruth Simmons, Alderman Breathwaite, uh, staff, a uh, Cindy Levitt from uh, the village, and others have been working <clears throat> in this area to provide a monitoring program to determine once and for all whether there are anything, any kind of chemicals or anything going on in the environment around the waste transfer station. Um, also here tonight, one of the uh, uh, scientists from the uh, task force is here tonight too if there are questions later. Our committee, we've worked very long and hard uh, regarding the possible impact of the waste transfer station and are in support of the funding voted on by City Council some five months ago. Several months ago, we were told the previously positive vote to fund a monitoring program for this site funding had been put in the wrong account and would have to be voted on once again. Where did the money go? And the fact that this tipping fees, you know, were uh, a result of us being sued, talking about the city, <clears throat> and I just can't understand why it was put in a, a different account when uh, it's been known for a long time, since last year, where the money was going to go. Um, 
for the last several months, we've been trying, uh, waiting on the subject to be added to the agenda to no avail until the newest city packet was released last week. The agenda item was finally there after much help from Alderman Ruth Simmons. I thank you. And sorry that I didn't come to you earlier. So much of this process feels like a crapshoot and has delayed our plans to notify the surrounding neighbors and social groups that monitoring once and for all would happen very soon. I've had to cancel us appearing before groups and neighbors several times due to this delay. We didn't want to go to people if we didn't have the equipment to show them when they saw people walking around in the neighborhood with them, they wouldn't be alarmed. We are requesting that you support the original vote for the funds to purchase equipment and supports that now can be used by the city at any time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Alderman Braithway. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And to Ms. Alexander, and I see a few other faces that were part of the uh, subcommittee that we, we met with. You know, obviously this issue goes, uh, it, it predates the members of council. Uh, the most recent discussions that I would want to recall is the conversation back in 2016 where we made a promise to the community to, you know, based on a number of surveys to address the environmental issue. And we also made promises to uh, restore some of the alleys and look at the infrastructure based on the amount of, of truck traffic and the imp overall impact. I think the goal that I had back then with, with Alderman Holmes and now Alderman uh, Ruth Simmons is, you know, based on, uh, based on the residents and the, the cost of the homes, looking at some of these repairs probably would not happen in the near future based on our current budget needs. But if anything, uh, we, we've tried to move the waste transfer station. We can provide some form of financial relief uh, to the homeowner. So with that being said, um, I think Mrs. Alexander, and I share this with the members of council, obviously Alderman Ruth Simmons is very much aware of that, and probably those in the press who've covered this, there was an expectation based on our community discussions that these dollars would be available. And, and I, I'm, I'm very, I don't know if I should use the word shocked or disappointed because I recall votes, but I have to be honest that I do not recall a vote that if we move the funds to the general fund, so I understand, I was informed that monies have always been separated based on the lawsuit, but I don't think, and Alderman Rainey, please correct me if I'm wrong, if moving these funds to the general fund meant that they were not going to be available for for the use of uh, the, the measuring the environmental impact as well as the capital needs, um, I don't recall that being a part of the vote, and it's and it's a little shocking right now and almost embarrassing that we actually have to bond out two hundred thousand dollars, which financially it's really hard for me to get my hand around that. I don't understand why did we meet as a joint committee, both fifth and second ward residents, Kumar. I can't tell you how many meetings that we've we've had with with both aldermen as well. Uh, the newly appointed Pat Effie. I'm looking at this as an environmental justice issue. And after the questions were raised uh, several months ago with the city manager that we actually have to, to bond it. And so my conflict is twofold is that, first of all, we made promises to the neighborhood. We had a very clear schedule that we were supposed to start meetings as early as January. Staff was involved in you know, I'm not gonna call any names, but it's it's been said to me that these projects have been put on hold and I just don't understand when whenever that decision was made. Alvin Ruth Simmons, I mean, I know that you're gonna have your own comments, but I feel a little bit blindsided by this and I I can't move forward with bonding two hundred thousand dollars for equipment based on the discussions that we've had in the committee. It just doesn't make sense to to put this on a loan payment with interest that's going to have an impact to our debt when my understanding was that the two hundred thousand dollars was supposed to be available. And then I'll 
please share your thoughts, Alderman Simmons, and then I want to come back and talk about the uh, the uh, infrastructure repairs that were promised as well to the community. Alderman Ruth Simmons. Thank you. Um, so I want to be careful to separate the two so that we do not um, further prolong the timeline for the environmental um, the envir environmental equipment and the services and understand more about the process in which these funds were um, approved for the general fund and if it was to um, balance a budget um, I'm very concerned that it was done at the environmental injustice to the area that is most impacted. So I'd like some answers on that. And then also in terms of looking at a, um, a bond for this fee, what is the balance of the, is it called the impact fees or the fees that we've been collecting starting January 1? Um, what what balance do we have of those funds and why can't we use those funds as well? Um, and I certainly um, walked with Director Stoneback and Alderman Braithwaite in our wards to identify infrastructure um, improvements, including alleys and, and other improvements, and um, message that to the community on um, at our inconvenience. These funds are going to be set aside for improvements for us and environmental um, monitoring. So I really need to have some answers on how I respond to the community on this. Certainly. City Manager. Alderman Fleming, Alderman Braithwaite, members of the committee. Um, this has been a longstanding issue. Um, we have uh, waited, I have waited, and I'm the one responsible for here. I'm the, the city manager, and uh, these decisions were mine to, to wait until I thought that there was consensus moving forward with both pieces of this. But I would like to turn your attention to page 186 of the uh, packet, the staff report on this item uh, that, that talks about how we got here. Uh, that uh, in 2016, the $1 million $263,000 collected in transfer fees since 2011 was deposited into the general fund. So the money uh, has always been in the general fund. Um, at the conclusion of the lawsuit, uh, which then made that money available, uh, I came to the City Council on May 23rd, 2016, and made a recommendation that $500,000 of those fees be transferred to the General Fund Reserve, and that $763,000 be transferred to the City's Capital Projects Fund. Uh, at that meeting, uh, the item was held. Uh, there was a discussion by the Council at that point that they wanted to have uh, additional discussions with the community on these matters. Uh, a subcommittee uh, was formed that included Alderman Holmes, Alderman uh, Braithwaite, and Alderman Ravel, uh, included herself because she felt the environmental justice issues uh, were, were important to be discussed. Uh, this item has not been before the council since then. Um, there have been really were two paths that were taken, one path uh, dealing with the environmental justice work, and I think all of you have done, I think, done a, 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 a job as far as explaining the work that's been done there. The second piece that was unresolved was the capital improvements. Um, this money has always remained in the general fund. Time has passed. Um, the money uh, was not allocated, and so remains in the general fund balance. So the city council uh, may choose to spend this money out of general fund balance as you see fit. Um, if you feel that it's not appropriate to move forward with the uh, monitoring equipment from uh, bond proceeds, we can take it from general fund balance, uh, and we'll make those adjustments, and the next time the council amends the, the budget, we can uh, have that dollars uh, there. Uh, the capital dollars uh, were discussed. Alderman Braithwaite chaired a, a committee that met several times. Um, my understanding is that largely those discussions ended around the uh, election cycle last year uh, and were not finished. And so that is the reason why the money was not allocated back into the, the capital projects fund. Again, it was staff's desire to do that back in, on May 23rd, 2016. Uh, the council asked instead uh, that uh, additional discussions be held with the community. Bottom line is the money was received. It is in our accounts, uh, and the council may direct that it be spent as you see fit. Um, finally, Alderman Simmons asked about the, uh, the monies on account. I believe, and I don't see any finance staff here, I think it's approximately $40,000 uh, 
uh, that, that, that's been collected, um, and that is now in a separate account in the solid waste fund. So as those fees are coming in, uh, that money is being segregated. But let me repeat uh, that these monies were deposited in the general fund, have remained in the general fund. There were no uh, allocations elsewhere, but they remained unallocated reserves of the general fund, um, and so and they remain there. So again, Alderman Fleming, members of the committee, uh, it's up to the committee tonight to provide direction as to how you'd like to spend the money and from uh, what source, if it comes through bonding or comes through some other fashion. Alderman Ruth Simmons. Um, if we decide not to go through bond and we go through general fund, is that something that we could decide on today in this council meeting? I want to be careful not to um, prolong the timeline because if I'm not mistaken, we may be behind by a yeah. quarter or so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and is Kumar here? Kumar, if you could tell us where we're at in the proposed timeline that the resident group worked on with staff and myself and Ottoman Braithwaite and the scientists. Of course. Uh, good evening, um, members of the committee, uh, Madam Chairman, um, staff, Kumar Jensen, Sustainability Coordinator for the city. Uh, so the timeline that we, I don't want to say initially, but most recently agreed upon was that um, depending on when the funds would be approved, we would begin purchase or the purchasing process for them in January. And we essentially created about a four month time frame from when the initial monitoring would take place, which would be the soil samples um, in and around the sites. And then uh, from January, essentially through the beginning of April, um, we would go through the purchasing process to acquire the other monitoring equipment, as well as hold those community meetings with um, the organization and individuals um, who we thought would be most uh, interested and impacted by by the study in the neighborhood. And so I think initially we thought we sort of needed about a four month time frame to do all of that, um, all of that work. Right. So being aware that we've had to put off community outreach and meetings and education, um, we need to have a response to this. And I'm wondering if we can decide as a council to move forward with spending the money out of our general fund, but what would that do? What sort of consequences would come from that if we made that decision today? I want to make every effort to honor the timeline that we have since we're behind already. We have reserves in the general fund, and uh, there would no there would be no significant impact on current year operations. Again, it's it's money less in our general fund reserve. Right, um, if if that's the case, then I, I think it would make sense to make a motion this evening and then clearly, you know, the timeline that was started back in November 2017, Kumar, um, to move us forward. Um, I would like to make the proper motion not only to move the $200,000, but also the dollars that were set aside for for capital improvement. And so when I read the memo, um, there's there's a little gray area in terms of the capital improvement project. And there's reference to Robert Crown and how the how the council should decide it. And one of the things that myself and Alderman Holmes, as well as as well as member of the, the members of the community and the city council, I think there was a very clear spirit that those funds be designated to those residents and I think we've used uh, a two block radius and and I think I've said in the past it's almost like uh, there's a tiff there meaning that those funds are to be allocated specifically for that community that lives in close <coughs> proximity and please by no uh, stretch of the imagination or even by my statement I'm saying that that's enough uh, based on what the community in that area has to live with, but I think there is a sincere uh, uh, promise that we're going to do our best to provide as much relief as possible. So I just want to make it clear I understand in a, in a very competitive budget season that that may be the will of some, but mm -hmm. with that motion to move out that the total sum, I want to make sure that we put a clear direction that those funds should be used specifically for those neighbors that are in two block proximity of the waste transfer station. 
Madam Member Simmons. Oh, the show, I think. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, I, I thought I was going to make a motion that we move a total of um, $1,263,248,000 to a designated fund for the impact area of the second of the fifth ward. And I'll second that. Question? Yes. So can that be that number be minus the monitoring cost dollars? One hundred ninety-two five. Why would you mind? Why, yeah, I'm not sure why. You because would. the idea was that the 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 one million two hundred sixty-three thousand two forty-eight would be used for environmental monitoring as well as capital improvements. Wait, say that again. Uh, my understanding was the council's direction back in 2016 Correct. was to spend funds for environmental monitoring from that 1.2 million as well as capital. <coughs> so if we're going to move forward with the spending of the environmental monitoring, then I would like to just have the balance go to this uh, uh, subfund for solid waste. Correct. So that I'm clear, you're going to approve the balance for the equipment and the monitoring of the whatever that amount is deduct that amount and transfer that balance to a designated fund for the impact area. So we would take, and I apologize for doing the math here at the dais, but. 192,000. So of the 1,263,248, we would transfer all but 167,500 to this fund for a total of 1,095,748. What about Correct. the study? Yeah, that we pay for That's the $25,000 study. Yeah. Well, I think that was all part of the that was all part of the, right. the package, unless I miss. Well, he, right. So the one ninety two Kamar covers, Kamar, Kamar. The one ninety two covers the current need. Yep. Okay. Very good. Right, so, so, we're we'll, so we'll go ahead and make that expenditure, and then move the balance into the sub fund. Perfect. Alderman Drew Simmons. Thank you. Um, I would also like um, Director Stone back to. Um, any sort of notes that were taken on the walk that we did, um, myself and Audemann Braithwaite, um, last fall in the um, in the alleyways of the second and the fifth ward, if we can um, have a report on that. And I could learn more about how we take actions forward to make those improvements. So uh, Alderman Rusem is members of the committee. So based on the, the committee's direction with the council's concurrence, then this is a, a capital improvement fund so that we would fund future projects as, and use this fund as a revenue source. So I wouldn't, I'm sorry if this is discussion, I wouldn't limit, I think that that was the main focus and understanding, but I wouldn't limit it strictly to capital improvements in the event that there's some programmatic needs that come out. One of the things that we discussed in great detail is that this environmental study is very important just to relieve some of the anxiety with the neighbors. So. I, I would like to hope that should it go either way and if there is a need for additional monitoring or follow-ups that were not tied to just spending those dollars on capital needs. And I don't want to make any predictions, but that was something that we made very clear in the committee with our residents that this initial splash or, or impact study may require additional so can we just call it like the waste transfer it, it, station? It, it, yeah. Yes, it is yeah. already improvement already fund. Just an impact okay, so can you, what is the final cost? So that I can make sure we have a correct number here. I'm sorry. That's okay. Can I make it a little louder? One million ninety-five thousand seven hundred and forty-eight. One million. I. I I need to. I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? Just one, one million ninety-five thousand seven hundred forty-eight. All right, so we are going to transfer that to a new fund recreated for the waste transfer impact zone or whatever we're calling that. And we're moving forward with this vote to approve 192, um, one hundred ninety-two five hundred for the purchase of the environmental equipment tonight, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and Alderman Fleming, for the record then, uh, if the council approves this, then this action will be sufficient for the purchase of the equipment, that we will not have to return uh, to the city council. And I have one more question. Uh, just a second. So 
we're going to double check the number. Kumar thinks that the number is not correct, so we're going to. While record, you're doing that, one more question uh, about the. Um, what are we calling the fees that are incoming that started on the host fees? That's correct. So the host fees will also be in the same designated fund, or that's a different fund? They will be in the same designated fund. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so we're just waiting for the corrected number now. And it's been moved and seconded. Do we need to amend this vote? I believe so. Uh, so the revised number is 1,070,747. So we will spend the 192,000 as described and this action will serve as council approval for that expenditure. And then that, that balance number will be, will be submitted to the fund, sub fund of the solid waste fund where we are collecting the, the tipping fees, the host agreement information. All right, thank you. So we need to make an amendment to this motion. Alderman Braithwaite, can you amend the motion? What's the amendment? I mean, you just, it well, was just the total dollar amount that was amended, right? Or corrected. Right. So we can okay. call the So we can call. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. And can we have it just so when it comes to city council, just the exact language that way, there's no confusion? I'd appreciate that. And then just to follow up to Kumar, uh, I'm, thank you. Uh, the last email that I have is November 8th that you presented a, a timeline for when we were going to meet with the members of the community when the equipment was purchased. Can we please prioritize just a new schedule? Certainly, so we can get moving on this. Yeah. I mean, with, with this decision, we yeah, we can move forward with rescheduling everything. Okay, and getting that timeline out there. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. All right. Any items for discussion or communication by the committee? My later. Ottoman Rainey. Oh, Ottoman Rainey. Um, I don't. I don't want to leave um, the world with the belief that putting money in the general fund is hiding it or in any way allowing it to be misused. Our general fund has, I think, about $118 million in it. And of that, so many of our expenses come out of it. So <clears throat> I agree this money should have been earmarked in some way, but I think to leave people with any feeling that the money was being misappropriated or misused or hidden or uh, being lost in the general fund is not correct. The general fund is our most important fund of our budget. I mean, it's a hundred and it's well over a hundred million dollars and the expenses, I mean, those are the expenses. The revenue is, you know, over a hundred million also, thank goodness. So. It, it's, the general fund is not a bad thing. The general fund is a good thing. But we do have special funds, and the, like the neighborhood fund, et cetera, et cetera. But just because that money has been held there doesn't mean there was anything untoward going on. Just want to comment on that. All right. So we've cleared that up. All right. So can we have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? So moved. All right. Second? Second. All right. So we have adjourned. We will start um, public... P&D at 8 p.m.